Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, mid-morning, mid-afternoon. There's another time zone. I haven't heard about it yet. Welcome back to Passion World Talk Radio Network. Educate, enlighten, entertain. Quick note, there's a sign up button to donate on passionateworldtalkradio.com. You got three ways besides checks and credit card. Just look it up. Look for the donation button. You can't miss it. And we ask for at least $5 because you have to cover the handling fees with PayPal. I know you don't think so, but 3% plus 30 cents is a big chunk. So make it a point to try to support either State of Current Affairs with Lillian Caldwell and Vicki Esther Chang from Singapore. And also she owns and operates the GDM Metropolis Education Publication Production. Check her out and then sign up to get your memoirs written and contact us at pwrnetworkllc at gmail.com. And today we're talking about the mouth. Used to be the mouth of Sauron, but now it's the mouth of Putnam who says, damn Yankees, they gave permission to the Ukraine military (laughs) to fire their missiles at our cities? How dare they? Only we're allowed to destroy cities in the Ukraine. They're not allowed to retaliate and defend themselves. So without further ado, I'm going to let Vicki Chang tell you how they view it from Singapore. Good morning, Vicki. Hi, um, good good evening, good afternoon, and good morning. It is um, 9.50. Um, 5 p.m. here on a Tuesday morning. It is the 19th of November, and I understand these years that um, in the digital universe, time, space, and geography is no more relevant. So I just want to thank everyone for tuning in, um, listeners and viewers who are following us or who who just happen to stumble upon Um, our show in any of the platforms, just hold on. Um, We are Vicky Esther Chan from Singapore and Lillian Cartwell from uh, Pennsylvania, USA. This is the show State of Current Affairs. We bring to you the latest, most current um, uh, affairs and news um, to you um, so that you don't have to scroll. And then you also hear my opinion from this part of the world and also Lillian from the other part of the world. And of course, um, listeners and viewers can tune in and can listen in or can write in to tell us your opinion or join us in in our program. Um, A couple of things very quickly, you know, Lillian, um, State of Current Affairs, every week I try to look for good news and I'm always training my neck out looking for good news for all of us. But you know what I knew, I learned at a young age that no news is good news. And I learned at a young age that my mom says, you got to keep up with current affairs. You got to keep up with what's happening around you in your community, in the country and in the world. So, you know what, yesterday when I saw the news yesterday, okay, just even before we talk about our opinion, the article today I'm pulling out is from express.co.uk. Express.co.uk is actually a, um, a UK um, news outlet. World War Three fears explode as Putin says nukes can be used if Ukraine fires US missiles. And that was actually like 20 hours ago. <laughs> he says that we have the right to use the nuclear missile by Mr. Putin after Mr. Biden, the president of your president, your current president, um, gives the green light to Ukraine to use long range missiles from the US. So that was what Putin says. And hey, you know what? Two hours ago, um, I think it was just two hours ago, um, Ukraine actually fired American long range missiles into the heart of um, Russia. So you know what? I think people are feeling jittery right now, um, Lillian, because it says that um, America 
wants to start World War Three. Oh no, no, no! The Russians <laughs> and North Korea. All North Korea is another joke. Yeah, North Korea so, can't build her, So, <laughs> so that's that's the same. But of course, we want to stop the war, and I I think um, what um, we want to reflect. I mean, I want to reflect my own personal view is that we should really stop having men, young men, old men, middle-aged men die in the front line in 2024. It's, it's been over a, um, a thousand days already um, for the war. So I think it's time to kind of really pause, reevaluate. Um, you know, no matter how it started, I think we all are straining our necks to wait for it to pause or stop somehow. So, you know what? We want the world to revert back to the times when supply chain is not disrupted due to Ukraine, um, U.S., due to, you know, all these zones that the ships cannot move and due to all these grains and all the supply of food that can't come out from Ukraine and the rest of uh, that part of the world. So um, this is something that I don't want to be talking about, but hey, you know what? I just had to look at it and announce to the world that if it affects you, it affects me right now. Um, the world is tied up and I think uh, we as uh, Main Street people, we want to lead a normal life. We, we want to have um, dreams that we still want to work on. We don't want to be sending people into the front lines and we don't want any country to be sending our husbands, our brothers um, into um, a, a mode of preparation for war, any part of the world. So without um, going into too deeply into um, the commentary, um, this is just what I want to like reflect what's happened in the last two hours um, because Putin has just signed uh, another document to lower the threshold for the use of nuclear weapon. So um, I think we are jittery right now because you know what? I, I just want my life because I still want to have a business to build. <laughs> Lillian, you know, we are the small people. Whatever happens up there, the rest of us um, suffer. And it is what Shakespeare says. Um, it's the massive wheel. Uh, the massive wheel in Hamlet, it says that whatever happens at the top of the authority, the rest of the world of the, of the plebeians suffers. Plebeians means peasants. We are the peasants of the world um, suffer. So that's the first article. And quickly, I would like to go on to the second article because we don't have a lot of time. I've chosen so many good articles, but you know what? Today, when I wake up, another sad news that democracy is dead or democracy is under threat because in Hong Kong, 74 um, activists, political activists, um, are pro-democracy activists are imprisoned in the landmark security trial and they've sentenced them to the longest trial for such a nature. Um, into um, the prison, into jail, behind the bars, and 47 of them. And, and just a little bit of background for the international listeners and viewers. Um, Hong Kong, for the last five years, has got this movement called the Umbrella Movement. So be before, um, before um, pandemic, the young people came out from the ages between 10 years old to university undergrads okay, from 10 to about 17 or 19, they came out in droves, even including elementary schools, because the parents allowed them to go to protest against what? Against the Chinese government using huge um, forces or you wanting to change the laws in Hong Kong so as they would like to clamp down on any democratic movement or letting the people have any say or any votes, uh, any political rights of the people and climbing down free speech. So that then the young people came out. We started off with people 
uh, young people from the university or the, the undergrads who started off in the university, they came out in droves with their umbrellas protesting the ironclad rule of China because it's, it has taken back the country. And then it kind of spread throughout um, over the couple of years, you know, there are waves and waves of um, protests in the streets by young people less than 20 years old. And why did, there are factions, of course. I mean, it's, it's just with like within the families, there are people like the dads who say that, yes, this is for democracy. It affects our children. Let them go and fight for their for the future, fight for their rights. Let them go and fight for democracy because that's their life. And the moms would say, no, um, you know, just keep quiet. Why are you disrupting the country? The country should just go on. When you have a de de democratic movement, it paralyzes the whole country. And it went on for months and months and months. The restaurants collapsed. The streets were closed and the police were coming out and they were using the rubber bullets and they were using the, the gas. Um, so the tear gas um, um, amongst the children, of course, there are um, sporadic people who, who suffered, who, who, who gave their lives in this pro-democracy movement. That was before the pandemic, if everybody recalled. So during the pandemic, because there was the COVID-19, it kind of simmered down. And the Chinese came in, the Chinese central government or communist government came in to set the laws about um, arresting people who come out for protest. They set the laws. So uh, you are talking about a country. You are talking about a country um, at the front line of being a communist or um, a, free, a free country. So we're witnessing right now Hong Kong, the fate of Hong Kong, the fate of young people, the fate of the people, they're fighting for their lives fighting for the future of the country, whether they get freedom or whether they get freedom as in they get, a, they get a freedom of democracy or they get under the rule, the ironclad rule of the central government or the communist country. And you know what happens where you are in China because all rights will be taken from you and you can just disappear overnight if you said something that is not pleasing to the authorities and you can just disappear and you don't know where you go. There are people who went behind bars for months and months and months and then they are released out and then they shut their mouth um, because these people spoke against um, the Chinese government. So here, I don't want to go into the politics, but I'm just going in to give a snapshot of the background. If you're looking at the news today, 47 a young people range of a different age, uh, age range from young to mid age, the older age, they are all sentenced behind bars because they came up strongly against the communist government and the ironclad um, laws that set in place that um, succumbs, uh, uh, stops their free speech, stops their right, and of course stops their voting. And the central government of China has the right to install the leader um, in Hong Kong, which is, of course, not a democracy. So, um, I mean, we get a lot of education in this part of the world because we do not know what democracy is. We are just born into a country. I mean, you're talking about Indo-Pacific, whereby governments are militaristic, right? They're usually from the military background. And if you're coming from Europe, it's usually you're talking about a very, very... Um, um, what's the word? Um, not autocratic, but you're talking about uh, uh, the monarchy rules uh, in Europe, whereby, of course, you've got the kings and queens that, that take over the country and they take over the, you know, and deeming themselves uh, the rulers of the people. I mean, the only democratic, the largest democracy we find right now is India and the US. Right. They are somehow the models that people are looking at to get themselves educated. The one man, one vote um, uh, uh, model. So today as you wake up, um, democracy is dead because a country that fights for democracy um, at, the, at the junction of being um, a free country and being ruled under communism, the people are all sent behind bars. 
So that's another sad story um, that I'd like to share. Um, sadly, uh, we wake up to really, really sad news. I actually wanted to share with you another news. We talked about water yesterday, contamination of groundwater, rivers, etc. Um, and just to recap, we talked about um, landfills, we talked about fertilizers, and we talked about um, um, you know trash that cannot be incinerated. That you know, we talked a lot about water. You can't, you can't live two days without water. Um, and today, um, if your water in your tap is actually contaminated, you buy bottled water, right? And the news just came from the U.S. They are recalling 150,000 bottles of water due to bacterial contamination. What do you drink? <laughs> well, I drink what we used to drink down in the Middle Ages. Wine, beer, milk. Yeah. So this article um, from Real Simple, go to the website. But Real a lot Simple. of this water is not from the U.S. A lot of it's imported in. Yeah, they import it. So this is what I'm trying to say. Um, when you get bottled water, it doesn't mean you're safe. Because who certifies that they are spring water or mineral water? You don't know. They just got it from the rivers, you know, without treating them. So, yeah, and... Um, um, People should know that the animals go into those rivers and streams just the way everybody else does. Yep. Something to think so, about. So realsimple.com, you can find the article there. It says that over 150,000 bottles of water recalled due to bacterial contamination. The FDA issued a class three recall for over 150,000 um, bottles of water um, bottled by Berkeley Club Beverages out of the Berkeley Springs, West Virginia. The products tested positive for coliforms, which are bacteria present in digestive tracts of animals, including humans, and are found in their waste. Exactly what you just said. Um, etc., etc., etc. Now, this is just an emblematic. It, and the news that came out, came out from the U.S. because the U.S. tested it. What about the other countries? What about the other countries that don't even test them? What about the other countries that companies just bottle it off from the taps and the rivers and they sell it um, unscrupulously in the shelves? And you, as an unknown, um, uninformed consumer, you just buy them off the shelves. So I'm just going to say nothing is safe for us anymore. Um, again, I would say that nothing is safe, but if we don't get ourselves educated and get our voices heard one day that make our voices and our, and our forces strong enough to, make, to force um, companies um, to be responsible, to to force regulators to be more responsible. We are always at that end. And I, I would say that um, we are looking at the world that is highly, highly contaminated and we are not going back. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it sounds like it's a political speech. We're not going back because we can't go back anymore. Whatever things has been contaminated and released out into the wild, it goes either the air, water, the liquid, in your rivers or solid in the land. So that's um, um, a sad news. Another sad news, I hate to say this, but you know, a reminder, a helpful reminder to all of us, um, a British uh, news website, Surrey uh, Life website. Um, the website is www dash get Surrey, S U R R E Y dash C O. Um, it says, and the news came out, uh, yes, on the 19th of November, as fresh as you can get the state of current affairs. Um, nothing new to me, of course, but I think a lot of us um, need the reminders. Shocking amount of sugar in common children's snacks exposed as worst combination revealed. New research has found that 
a typical combination of snacks consumed over the course of a day could push children's sugar intake to more than triple the recommended daily limit. And it goes to say that shocking, day, shocking new data has exposed the high sugar content in popular sweet snacks often consumed by children. The research conducted by Action on Sugar based at Queen Mary University of London analyzed individually packed uh, individually packed and portioned sweet snacks readily available in supermarkets. It discovered that a typical combination such as a cake, a chocolate bar, and, and two big biscuits eaten throughout the day contains 1,326 calories, 92.5 grams of sugar, Let's listen to it again. A cake, which means as a slice of cake, a chocolate bar, two biscuits, two pieces of biscuits eaten throughout the day can contain 1,326 calories. And that's excluding your meals and your sweet drinks and 92.5 grams of sugar. And this is the triple, this is triple the, the recommended daily sugar limit for children aged 11 and over. And that includes you and I because you are children above the age of 11. So, um, and it says that um, children aged, aged 11 and older should consume no more than 30 grams of free sugars per day. Um, et cetera, et cetera, and, and the data continues. So, so this is just an example about um, we monitor um, children's intake, but I think, again, if we extrapolate them for our consumption as adults, we, we really consume um, uh, um, unconsciously throughout the day. We've got our sugar drinks, we've got our Coke, we've got our sugary, um, juices, juices do come in a packet form. It do comes with sugar because the sugar comes in a form of glucose, fractose, met, um, uh, different kinds of uh, uh, sweeteners and sugar replacement. So that's the article that I would like to share. Um, two good news, however, uh, it says that it is found that cocoa or green tea may protect against negative impact of fatty foods when stressed. Um, a cup of minimally processed cocoa or green tea would have more health benefits for people who would normally reach for fat-rich food when stressed. So um, here it does go on to say that um, if you're eating a lot of comfort food during your stress times, you usually will reach out to fatty food, fried food, sugary stuff, uh, because they're comfort food. Um, and what can actually um, help you um, in blocking certain of this fatty um, foods or fats from these food or sugars, um, number one is green tea. We know that already. So the question is, have you gotten your good um, cup of green tea today and um, cocoa? And here it refers to cocoa and green tea without sugar or additives um, or other added flavorings. So again, as a reminder to all of us, um, uh, again, uh, myself, I take a lot of green tea. I've got my, I'm just going to show you something that I can't, I can't do without a, a huge pack of herbs that has 20 herbs inside this pack that includes green tea. The first pack that I put in there, uh, I'm showing that to you because I am a self-proclaimed health advocate, um, but not an extremist. Okay, another pack here. So altogether, I've got two big 
packs, and it, they are like triple the normal size, right? That goes into my tea. And I and I say, um, uh, and I remind everyone because it is it is something that I, I do. So it's not something that I'm trying to share that I don't practice myself. So um, again, um, this is another, I would say a good news or a, a kind of reminder to everyone um, to have your um, very bitter green tea or very bitter black tea or very bitter red tea or your kombuchas for the day. Um, and even then kombucha has got sugars. Um, the last article from University of Birmingham, uh, UK, um, you can find that um, Birmingham, which is B-I-R-M-I-N-G-H-A-M, Birmingham.ac.uk. And this is the news from University of Birmingham, UK. Cocoa could protect you from negative effects of fatty foods during stress. Now, we are living in a highly stressed state everywhere in the world. It says that new research has found that um, flavonol-rich cocoa drink can protect the body's vas vasculature, that means your heart, uh, against stress, even after eating high-fat food. Now, that's good news. So if you do take... Um, a lot of fats, a lot of um, deep fried food. I think I think Americans like deep fried um, chicken, deep fried chicken wings, etc. Um, I think the whole world loves deep fried chicken wings. It's a universal truth. It's a universal favorite food. Um, you can have your cup of really, really bitter cup of black coffee without sugar, of course, without additives. Or here it says... Um, your dark cocoa drink without sugar or additives, and myself a huge advocate of tea, whether it's green tea, black tea, or red tea. So that's my few news for you. It is a it is ten twenty two um, p.m. here in Singapore. So that's my take on the news. Um, uh, three pieces of negative news, but I think it's something to inform everyone. It's kind of affairs, but there is hope. Um, if you are trying to slim down, you're trying to get your, uh, to reset your health, it doesn't start um, just one day. It takes, a, it takes a long time. Just like myself, I did my abs uh, exercise, um, about 15, about 10 to 15 minutes of abs exercise, just like doing your, your crunches. And then I did like two minutes of jumping jacks. Now it doesn't, you don't have to go to the gym, Right. If you want to reset your health, anyone at any age, you could do that slowly. Start by having walks. Start by having your tea. And I hope that this is good news for you. Nothing is too late, but persistence, consistency is the key to better health, to reverse certain things and to reverse certain chronic um, negative symptoms in your body. So um, Lillian, I hope that ends on a good note for you and the listeners and the viewers. Um, Vicky from Singapore. Absolutely. And I would like to add one or two things before we wrap it up. Does the fight between the Ukraine and Putin in remind you of kids fighting in a sandbox that's not quite big enough for everyone? And instead of throwing sand, pails, and shovels, they use nuclear weapons. Well, yeah. I think that the mothers of the world need to get yeah. together and yeah. talk to their two yeah. children who haven't really learned that might does not make right. They're really nasty. Go play a game of chess. That's why they invented the game instead of having war. But they've turned it for money reasons. I'm, if they want to fight each other and throw the chess pieces at each other, I'm fine. But I don't think men, there's always men, men have the right to destroy billions of lives just because they want a piece of somebody else's kingdom. It's called imperialism, and that's all it is, imperialism. A second note for those who are interested 
Gandhi won India's freedom by nonviolence. Think about that. And a whole generation of Spartan women got together and prevented their warrior husbands by refusing to have sex with them. Something else to think about. And I'm asking you to think about this because we're at an impasse where war is not the answer anymore. Look how far we've gotten since Hiroshima. If you want to put it that way. You yeah. want to take a good look at what nuclear bombs can do? There are some survivors left from Hiroshima and from the other city that was bombed. Go take a good look at the victims. Nagasaki. Talk to their, thank you. Talk to their relatives and the people who have come after and see what's happened to them. Because, folks, I don't care if you have a bunker in New Zealand. You will not be able to survive in a world where there's no sun, where there's no rain, and where you can't grow anything, whether it's water, oxygen, or the land that hasn't been contaminated. I don't care about it because I need medication to stay alive, so... I'll go anyway, but you really do need to think this out. They say it takes about a thousand years, maybe, for things to get back to normal. Tell me, how long can you last in that bunker before the parts start wearing out? And it's not like you can call up on your cell phone and get replacement pieces. I'm just saying. So thank you very much for joining us this evening and this morning. At State of Current Affairs with Vicki Chang from Singapore and Lillian Caldwell from Reading, Pennsylvania, US of A. Program sponsored by GDM Metropolis Education Publication Production. I love that name. Just kind of, you know, Peter Piper picked a peck of peck of peppers, right? So we got that through. Want to write a memoir, memoir? Contact us at pwrnetworkllc at gmail.com. Also, the obstacles of podcast training, two month course, five days a week, one hour, two for the price of one. HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash education dot passionate world talk radio.com forward slash masterclass. And last but not least, myflex.ai, go over to http colon forward slash forward slash AI with Lillian.com. Sign up for a monthly investment. Save time. Remember, the new world is comprised of video and verbiage. And Ruby AI answers the call. Thank you all oh, very you. much for listening. And Can I interject a little bit before we close this? Yes. Um, just to remind um, the listeners or the viewers who are coming in, um, we are about to launch um, a December vacation um, program um, between uh, Lillian and myself for the international viewers and, and, and listeners. We will roll out more information a little bit later. You can learn about speaking, communications, and also podcasting. So um, we're gonna we're gonna show um, we're gonna show you the brochures. We're gonna show you more information, the links, etc. Um, a little bit later. But I think that's something that um, is gonna come out. There's something that we have discussed with them. The next thing is um, again our book. Um, Gold Nuggets for Entrepreneurs, Digital Strategies, Podcast for Business and You. It's relevant for everyone. It's about communications. It's about how you can use the podcast to build the business. And it's also about you um, owning uh, the technology in your hands. Because it is at this time, but before the governments come in to cut us all off, in this connection, go and create your own podcast to connect yourself with the rest of the world, to find your voice and to speak up for someone. Um, and not only that, um, the memoirs, 
um, a couple of questions that I would like to pose to everyone. Um, why are we launching the memoirs, It's My Life, with Lillian Cutwell and myself, Singapore? Um, a couple of questions you will, I would like to set people thinking about your life. A lot of people think, oh, there's nothing um, I would like to, to, to write about my life because I'm such a small person. There's nothing I want to leave. I just want to ask you a couple of things. If you reflect on your life, first question, what would you do? If you had not been afraid, what would you do if you had not been afraid? What would you do if you could have turned back time? What would you do if certain decisions have been made or have not been made? Next question. If you've got a few chapters and this is the chapter you're writing about your life, what will be the next chapter about? And next question, what would you be celebrating next year this time? Think about these questions and these questions will set off thinking about your life. Because each one of us have got this finite amount of time on earth and we mean a lot we, our lives mean a lot to us. So I don't want anyone to walk away thinking that, oh, my life is just too little. I've got nothing too much to say. Um, you know, in my podcast, I ask people, do you want to talk about something about your life? A lot of people will just say, no. I mean, there's nothing I want to say. Nobody wants to know me and I've got nothing about my life. No, I'm going to just going to destroy that hypothesis once and for all. Now you are important. You better think about the questions that I've said. Um, think about some of these questions. What would you do if you hadn't been afraid? What would you do if you hadn't made that decision? What would you do if you had made that decision? And what would you write about the next chapter of your life? And at the end of your life, what would you have celebrated? Thank you, Lillian. Thank you very much for joining us. Remember, you can go over to HTTPS colon colon, I say colon forward slash forward slash passionateworldtalkradio.com. Scroll down to the end of the page. You'll find state of current affairs. Click on it. It will take you to the page. Go below the comment form or leave a comment. And click on the Google link and it'll take you right into the belly of the beast where you can see this video all over again. Thank you very much and have an awesome day.